Meet the friendship detectives. I mean, how do you define friendships? Taking a closer look at this warm and fuzzy bond. How early a social brain starts to form is a really good question. Science is turning to the animal kingdom for answers. That was a clip from a new documentary for The Nature of Things, and it's called The Secrets of Friendship. And it takes a look at the science behind what builds those important bonds between us. Well, the filmmaker is with us today. Judith Pike is here to tell us all about it. Judith, hi there and welcome. Thank you, thanks for having me. Well, this is a topic near and dear to my heart. I, I value my friendship so, so much, but what got you down this path to, to putting together this documentary? Well, uh, same as you, I totally value my friendships. They've been super, super important to me over the course of my life. And um, when COVID happened, I think we were all having uh, some interesting conversations with our friends and we missed them, or at least I missed my friends, especially when we were in lockdown. And I started thinking, God, this is meaning so much to me. I wonder what the science says about friendship. And that's really what inspired the film. So are you talking about just the fact we couldn't see people physically? Or are you talking about, um, you know, actual divisions about how different people viewed COVID? Both. Okay. Um, you know, I think we all missed not being able to get together with our friends in big groups. And um, we were all kind of navigating a whole bunch of unknowns. And um, we were all trying to kind of go by our own compasses and what we were trying to, you know, learn. And that didn't always mesh with everybody around us. Um, so like friends, I, I, you know, maybe you heard of these things too, but I heard of friends have very intense conversations around COVID and little shifts in relationships. And all of those things got me interested in what is it about this bond that is so essential and so fascinating and so um, important yeah. to us. Yeah, no, yeah. Uh, you're, you're absolutely right. And you've hit it, uh, the nail on the head in terms of uh, me. I've experienced something with a very, very long and dear friend and where we just had very philosophical differences uh, about the approach to COVID. And that was the wedge that, that was driven between us. And mm -hmm. it's hurtful. I, I try to accentuate the positive and try to, you know, remember the good times, but it's, uh, yeah, it's really hard. So, so in, as you're exploring this then, where, where did you turn for some of the, some of the answers behind the science? Oh, well, when I started to look into the science of friendship, I was really blown away with the range of work that's being done in the research community. And so we talked to some of the most interesting scientists out there in terms of work being done around friendship, not only in humans, but in humans and other animals. So we looked at friendship in dolphins in an area called Shark Bay, Australia. We looked at friendship in rhesus macaques in Puerto Rico. We looked at friendship between people and animals. So we talked to a, a dog scientist. And we also visited a baby lab, a toddler lab to talk about, you know, the building blocks for friendship. And a really interesting uh, couple of scientists actually for adult friendships, one looking at how, um, you know, investigating that feeling of clicking with your friend. And um, another who was, uh, looking at what can men do, what activities do they do that helps build friendship bonds? Oh, interesting. Across yeah. so many. So, what <laughs> did you find out? And you talked about this clicking. Does this just happen? This, you know, great friendships happen by chance, or generally do they take a, a lot of work, maintenance? Oh my God. Well, so this is where the topic is so um, diverse and has so many different aspects to it. And I think the answer to your question is both. <laughs> and one of the people that we feature in the film, her name is Carolyn Parkinson, and she's a social neuroscientist. And what she did was she took a whole cohort of students who hadn't met each other before, and she scanned their brains. 
and she looked at the brain responses to various videos and stimuli. Um, and then she waited. And a couple of years later, she followed up with these students to see who had become friends with each other. And she found that those with the more similar brain patterns mm. had actually either become friends with each other or with one another's friends. She then took the step one step further, the study one step further, and she realized that it's actually, if you look at those brain scans, they can be predictive of you becoming friends with someone. So that idea that we have, that we may be on the same wavelength with our friends, actually is, it looks like it's starting to bear itself out in the science. Okay, well, let's talk about maybe uh, that's what can bring people together. And that is really interesting because sometimes it's uh, maybe you're both new mums together, for example, and your kids are growing up, or maybe you're at college together and that you're bonding because you have similar interests and in studies or that type of thing. But those don't necessarily last beyond, beyond that little time. Sometimes it's time and space and it's just not convenient or as convenient yeah. as before. What about the kinds of things that can, that can break up friendships? And we talked about... Again, that, that big moment, it could be a, a, you know, a big argument, and if you don't reach out, you probably have lost that friendship forever. But uh, anything else come to mind? Yeah, I mean, a lot, about it, it, a lot of that, uh, you know, what brings friends uh, to a place where they're not as close anymore, it's often about just spending time with each other mm -hmm. and about... Um, you know, being in the same zone in a way. Uh, one of the things that we learned is about the top qualities that people look for in their friends. And people look for people who are trustworthy, mm -hmm. who are supportive, um, who are uh, loyal, and people that they enjoy spending time with. So there's, it's just interesting to realize that, you know, as people, we do have these sort of general values that we look for in our friends. I can't wait to, to see more of this documentary. Where, where can we see it? So it's going to be on the nature of things uh, this Friday at 9 p.m. and then it'll be streaming so everybody can watch it anytime on CBC Gem. Um, so I'm super excited for people to watch it. I personally found it so fascinating and you get to see dolphins and monkeys and dogs and babies <laughs> and there's just so much about friendship in this film i really i'm really looking forward to people seeing it thank you ah, thank you so much thanks. for coming in <laughs> and really what a great what a great topic thanks a lot for having me